Back in 2012, the review of the first Watch Dogs and its troubling near-future setting that reflects current times stole the show at E3. In Watch Dogs, the city is run on a central operating system owned by private companies that harvest everyone's online data, compiling records of sensitive information on all its citizens. It's relatable. Since we live in an era where most who own a mobile phone produce an overkill of data that can be capitalized on in disturbing ways. It was a demo that promised depth, but when released, it revealed a superficial protagonist who could only use his power to hack as a weapon for revenge. A flat lead guilt tripped by the past, justifying his actions without a moral compass. And the game just presented itself too seriously to make that believable. Unfortunately, this is still the accepted default when it comes to the depth of characters in most video games. Because it's easier for developers to offer agency through an external conflict than to have them deal with the internal issues of the protagonist without compelling gameplay. A potential trap that could alienate players. But by doing so, also preventing most games from having something interesting to say. And that needs changing. This is Upgrading Open World Games, a series that explores how current developments in game design and technology could improve the open world games of the future. Because open worlds showcase the complexity of what interactive media is capable of by ambitiously merging various genres and their gameplay mechanics to function as one satisfying whole. I examine how the most promising developments could eventually rethink open world games entirely and shape what's to come. In each video, the focus is only on one design aspect. And this time it's upgrading character depth in open world games. And more specifically, how it can connect better to gameplay. So what actually is a character with depth? As Robert McKee puts it in his book Story, the only way we ever come to know characters in depth is through their choices under pressure. There's an abundance of sources that have opinions on writing deeper characters. But the bottom line is that it's always about internal conflict and the difference between how they feel and act in public. In stories that amounts to the arc between their characterization and true character. With characterization, McGee means the sum of all observable qualities of a human being. Everything knowable through careful scrutiny. All aspects of humanity we could know by taking notes on someone day in and day out. The totality of these traits makes each person unique. Because each of us is one of a kind combination of genetic givens and accumulated experiences. This singular assemblage of traits is characterization, but it's not character. True character is revealed in the choices a human being makes under pressure. The greater the pressure, the deeper the revelation the truer the choice to the character's essential nature. The point is that these opposing dimensions carry all kinds of sublayers, which a writer can use to conceive an arc with an archetype that best reveals the true character. A journey of a psychological development that begins with one emotional state and ends with another, not defined by backstory or inner demons, but by decisions and behaviors. It also shows why there's nothing compelling about the protagonist of Watch Dogs. A tormented ego blind to his own contradictions, never transcending his desire for revenge. A better candidate to fit the profile of having a layered personality is Arthur Morgan in Red Dead Redemption 2. Arguably the most fleshed out playable character in an open world to date. So for this episode I'd like to use Arthur and examine how good his depth is expressed through engaging gameplay and what can be done to improve its shortcomings. Let's start with what defines his personality. This world has its consolation. For Arthur to make sense, his struggles must be related to the world he lives in. Red Dead's world building advantage is that it's set in a real historical period, making it more relatable than when it would take place on a different planet. Because there's less that has to be explained, the time period is fascinating as well. It's near the end of the Wild West era, wherein the law gets organized and hunts down the last remaining outlaws. It's in this setting that the Van der Linde gang is risking one less robbery, to secure their retirement and outrun the progress of the modern industrial civilization. There she is. A real city. 
the future. To have a coherent world with consistent rules, like its history, social structure, technology and such, is to have settings that inspire to write more compelling characters for. The conflicts of a world in which political opinions differ, but everyone needs to survive from a shortage of resources, is a lot more intriguing than those of a world wherein mankind unites to eradicate an invasion of evil. When it's just about good versus evil, the conflict is focused on the external threat, more often resulting in shallow characters because they all have the same goals. In Red Dead, Arthur's internal conflict is that he's loyal to his adoptive father and charismatic leader of the gang, Dutch but is starting to distrust what Dutch's true motivations really are. Dutch holds on to the old-fashioned way of doing things. Preaching freedom with false promises to keep the gang united. Like a cultist. Trust me, I am gonna get us out of here. But as Arthur slowly finds out, it's only to get what Dutch wants. Arthur's arc is about the decline of relationships, coming to terms with the end of an era that determined his routines and figuring out what to do next, without any real perspective. History especially is the part of world building that can give characters the most depth. Its tech, culture and politics need to have a history that's worth exploring. Take Horizon Zero Dawn, where primitive humans live amongst dangerous robot dinosaurs. Which sounds ridiculous, but does become part of the story and the arc of the protagonist. What's great about engaging history is that it can be a rewarding reveal of various puzzles. In the story episode, I've already argued the potential of discovering stories through exploration instead of exposition. But why not use a similar approach of environmental storytelling to learn about characters? How the conflicts of the game world's history have shaped its inhabitants into something more than random quest givers, with the sole purpose to send you on your way. So it's rabbits and your trinket you need this time. Okay, I'll find you at your camp. In Red Dead, there's enough character information to be discovered through searching items, overhearing conversations, and by doing side activities. But most of what's revealed about personalities is still done through cutscenes than with gameplay. It primarily wants to be a cinematic story that directs you what to do and how to do it, then a possibility space that allows you to tell your own stories, even though it's set in an open world. But more on that later. The simplest way to implement more character depth through gameplay is during traversal. When you're in control of reaching a destination, either by foot, animal, or vehicle. Dialogue on these occasions is usually reserved for instructions on your current assignment. In Red Dead as well. But sometimes the conversation shifts to more personal matters. You know, I had a son once, years ago. Don't talk about him much. It's an elegant way to get better understanding of his motivations while still using the controller. But there are enough challenges left to improve the use of traversal to reveal character depth. It's arguable if all traversal makes the game better. Because worlds keep increasing in size and distances become longer, it has become an activity I more often like to skip and one that's too interchangeable between games. In Red Dead, you can even auto-traverse, becoming a passive spectator that can select between camera angles of the cinematic. It's why I prefer the effort being put in the traversal of Death Stranding, in which each journey is the adventure, and arriving at my destination feels like the achievement. Playing as Sam, the post-apocalyptic porter, I found it very satisfying to connect all the delivery locations in the mountains with an efficient network of zip lines. It's the result of measured choices, what equipment to bring, what structures to build and where. These are not unlimited resources, so I have to choose wisely, making the journey a playground of possibilities inviting me to be creative, which is uncommon for traversal in games. Why not combine that with a game like Firewatch? Where most of the interaction takes place during traversal through conversations over the radio. Hey. What the hell's wrong with you? 
in Death Stranding everything you learn about its characters will happen through its cutscenes. Justifying its world building with lengthy exposition dumps and swamping your inbox. You could argue that it wouldn't fit Sam's personality to have long conversations over the radio. But having every client pour their heart out over email after just meeting Sam is not only weird, but a weak and non-gameplay alternative to provide your backstory. As for the cutscenes, it's not that I'm against them, because they are more effective at showing an emotion without needing to tell it. But using them for endless explaining just made me care less for the characters and their stories. It's a missed opportunity for more interactive storytelling that give players the choice to figure out the mysteries for themselves than forcing them to listen to it all. And Traversal still has plenty of unexplored options to inject character development with gameplay, combining Firewatch's method of communication with Death Stranding's Traversal mechanics could just be one of its many possibilities. So we have elements of environmental storytelling and traversal as the first two options to explore character depth with gameplay. The third is by paying more attention to the quiet parts of games. Safe zone locations where you can relax, reflect, build, offering a variety of activities without constant pressure. One of the largest collections of these alternative activities in an open world can be found in the Yakuza series with its wide range of mini-games and side missions that contrast the main gameplay loop of beating up thugs. Besides giving insights into the Japanese lifestyle in an entertaining way, they're also effective in showing a different side of the protagonist. For instance, you'll learn that tough guy Kazuma can also be passionate for karaoke. Getting dates through the telephone club and remote control toy car racing, a softer side that makes him a lot more charming than you'd initially think. It's almost like comic relief that can be completely ignored if preferred without feeling disconnected from the main story. Yet you rarely see quiet time used to learn more about characters, like dinner time, which in real life is an opportunity to be social. But in games eating and drinking is mainly to maintain health than getting to know other characters better. In the series Mindhunter, there's a scene where Agents Holden and Ford arrange a pizza for their interviewee. Pizza? You guys... To have a better chance, he opens up about himself. And there are awfully few attempts of something similar to be found in gameplay. One example is the Red Strings Club, where you need to prepare the perfect drink for guests to get them in the right emotional mood for revealing relevant information. Games are capable to introduce more effective varieties. It doesn't even have to be a puzzle. If done right, sharing a meal to find out more about someone's personality can be the reward alone, when it's able to change your perspective. Unfortunately, Red Dead didn't make much use of this during quiet time, while there's plenty to do. It's mostly based around the camp that functions as the hub. Here you can regain strength, play games, help with chores, change outfits, find side missions, or go out into the woods to hunt and fish. And although the latter has an exemplary moment of sharing tales when fishing, Remember that time we sent Arthur out fishing? Most of the activities that reveal more about Arthur or the personalities that surround him are the item requests and campfire moments where you don't really do anything but listen. And because of the large variety of what quiet time can be, it remains the biggest possibility space to peel away the layers of personalities with gameplay and push the boundaries of how character depth can be explored in open worlds. Another gameplay mechanic that can help reveal true character is choice, which ironically often comes at the expense of character depth. There's a reason why the main story of Red Dead is so scripted. Taking the most character-defining choices away from the player allows the creators to be in control of realizing Arthur's most dramatic arc. It's challenging and expensive enough to write a fitting resolution for a 50-hour story, let alone to consider all possible character arcs if the player has more agency. That's why cinematic games are often more functional as a linear experience. This is underlined by Red Dead's honor system 
a system designed to have some influence over Arthur's personality. What happened? But is better at showing how choice can derail than add something meaningful. The idea of the honor system is that if you treat people nice, like attending to their troubles, help with daily chores, and donate to the camp fund, your honor level rises. Then characters will act with more respect, Bonjour, monsieur. giving you discounts and more choice in items. But if you choose to act like a psychopath in the open world, harassing people for no good reason and steal every time you get the chance, your honor level lowers, impacting your reputation. You want one? It's just that the latter behavior is totally out of character with the Arthur you portray throughout the main story. Ultimately, it's about a man for whom it's become impossible to sustain his way of life and is struggling to turn the tide. But his most important choices are already decided by the script. Having the freedom to be helpful or nasty hardly changes anything about his fixed moral arc of redemption. There just aren't enough possible story resolutions to support the honor system in a satisfying way. Still, these are the kind of choice challenges that need improvements to realize the full potential of characters in open worlds. So what's the most remarkable innovation that's dealing with this problem and could become an inspiration for dialogue choice in future open worlds? My pick is Disco Elysium, with its approach to let character personality drive the experience. The goal is to solve a murder, which is fixed. But how you build the character to achieve this will control the choices he can make. It starts when you wake up with severe amnesia, a bit of a video game cliché. Memory loss makes it easier to jump straight into the action and have the revealing of the protagonist's identity be part of its story and puzzles. But in Disco Elysium it's to let the player decide which personality to pursue based on the 24 facets that define his brain. Balance between your intellect, psyche, physique and motorics. Just compare these two builds. On the left side I've chosen a personality with low perception. It's the reason why I don't sense little things hidden in my surrounding, like the broken window right in front of me. The personality I chose on the right side, however, has high enough perception to notice the window, but because my visual calculus, the skill that lets me create virtual crime scene models, is low, I can still fail to do anything useful with this information. But if both skills were a bit more balanced, then I would have easily figured out what happened. Besides the effect this has on conversations, all the chosen skills can also cause internal dialogues. For example, having to determine if you trust in how your rhetoric voice, the ability to break down arguments, thinks of a person, or to confide more in your instinct for drama, the ability to spot lies and treat the world as a stage, possibly even deluding yourself if the voice you sided with turns out to be false. It's story shaped by role playing. The lists of tasks might be the same, but the way they play out can vary. Now this is not to say that every open world needs personalities made out of a complex skill system and have lengthy conversations like in Disco Elysium. But what's notable is that stories in games are mainly plot driven. Even if that plot centers around the internal struggle of the protagonist, its outcome is still scripted with external goals that evoke enough action, like having revenge, fighting for freedom, searching a treasure or just trying to survive, while the medium of video games is uniquely positioned to reverse that. Because as long games emulate stories from passive media, the results will always be inferior, since games have gameplay elements to consider that most often won't contribute giving a story and its characters more depth. To surpass this, the focus will have to shift to more character-driven stories that can influence the action with player choice. Easier said than done, of course, but the most logic direction if we want to have character complexity determined by gameplay. In the next episode, I will focus more on the developments that can help to achieve this path. And Disco Elysium gives a good first impression of what making inner conflict a choice can do to influence events. It bases possible choices on previous inputs, realizing a personality with depth through gameplay that defines character. Like, did I aspire self-improvement, or preferred using violence as a solution? Or was I too busy exploring my self-destructive side with substance abuse? But what I found lacking is that none of that conversation felt like I was solving something.
In Disco Elysium, building my identity is more like an advanced interactive novel. But it never made me feel smart. As long as I kept conversing, the mystery will eventually solve itself. But in a detective game, it's the figuring out part that should be the most rewarding, which could have been resolved by adding a more exclusive dialogue system, reserved for key moments that will only present itself after gathering enough evidence, allowing me to create my own questions or answers, like a puzzle to draw conclusions. That's a system that will make you feel a lot smarter in finding solutions than when you have to select them from a pre-scripted multiple choice list. It's disappointing to see how little this has evolved, while it offers many opportunities. Not just adding a puzzle element to dialogue, but to thought as well. See how effective games like Return of the Obra Din and Do Not Feed the Monkeys are in using notes as a key puzzle interface to figure stuff out. In Red Dead, Arthur uses his journal for notes. It does a good job of making his interior life clearer by detailing his more reflective side sharing his doubts, drawings and opinions about others, emotions he extrovertly suppresses. But browsing through pages just to read text isn't really gameplay. Having some choice in what Arthur writes could have made the journal more of a puzzle-solving mechanic that can also add depth to its characters, instead of having random finds that don't connect to anything. Take this frozen couple holding a mysterious map. At first it might feel cool to randomly discover this peculiar scene, but secrets in Red Dead seem to work more as something to be shared online and have wild theories about, instead of being related to other parts in the game. Finding them is pure coincidence. But if the most plausible theory to come from this is that it's a panoramic map drawn on this location pointing to cities, then I don't find that a rewarding payoff. In the future I expect to see improvements in connecting scenes like this better to the rest of the open world. Make it a discovery at the end of a lead, maybe through conversation or something I overheard, or an article I've read in the newspaper, just to make me curious enough to seek out this location like a self-initiated quest, that when I retrieve this map it can hint me towards the next step. Maybe a puzzle, where I have to gather info by asking questions to the right people, finding discrepancies between found items and told stories, collecting enough notes that I can eventually solve in my journal. Revealing the last location where this mystery will be concluded with a rewarding payoff. Maybe the story about why this couple was starting a new life and giving closure to a family member who will learn the truth about their disappearance in a way that might change how Arthur sees himself. Just like the former system in which you shape your identity by the choices you make, puzzles too are gameplay that can add more depth to the characters in an open world. A combination of both approaches still has a lot of unexplored potential. And just the shaping character through choice mechanic alone will be much harder to accomplish in larger open worlds than Disco Elysium. It's understandable why the Outer Worlds, for example, Another dialogue-heavy role-playing game that lets me invest in conversation attributes and skills is more superficial. There are plenty of options, either developing a personality by choosing to lie, persuade or intimidate without having to use a weapon, or skipping conversation altogether to proceed with violence. But all encounters seem designed to enable those choices as part of your character's progression. They will never change their mind in an intriguing way making them feel as tools that offer gameplay variation in quest completion instead of personalities you'd like to know more about. But if Disco Elysium already needs more than 1 million words for a proper response to every interaction, how much dialogue is necessary to have comparable character depth in the outer worlds? Here's the dialogue tree of one character in one scene. Now imagine how that would look if Red Dead had these choices. That will produce towering scripts, a crusade that only few studios can afford. Needing an army of writers to fill the world with enough content that's not too repetitive. It's why the craft of writing screenplays for games still has plenty obstacles ahead before they are able to combine more complex characters with satisfying gameplay. Non-verbal communication is often more telling than words can express. In seconds you can see that someone with this posture or facial expression will not be classified as an optimist. 
And even a pigeon can have a confident character type when you see it walking like this. Visible body language in games is primarily reserved for cutscenes, so a scripted interlude with close-ups that don't require a controller. But also during gameplay at specific story beats that are scripted as well. And it's no different in Red Dead. AI could help to make this more dynamic in the future. A possible foundation of this can be found in The Witcher 3. Because of its massive size, having actors performing all the necessary cutscenes with dedicated motion capture was going to be too expensive. To solve this problem, the developer made a cutscene creator they called the dialogue system, capable of creating less complex scenes without losing cinematic quality. This tool was used to create around 35 hours of cinematics by just using the actor's recorded dialogue as the input for their performance. A simple explanation of this process is that after adding the dialogue to the application, cinematic designers instead of animators start building. First they give the scene some info, like what characters are in it, what sort of poses should they have, should they stand or sit, and much more. With the push of a button, the tool can then procedurally generate a scene, including camera positions and editing cuts. A first pass of the cinematic, automatically assembled from an asset library of over 2400 pre-recorded animations and divided between character types that can all be tweaked to achieve a custom look and bring the scene alive. This is but a simple description of a system that has a lot more steps for desirable results and for the most part still relies on designers, who are much better in understanding the nuance of gestures than an AI. But it conceptualizes a new perspective on how future systems might deal with the real-time generation of cutscenes. When algorithms become better at tracking and interpreting player data, the player might become an accomplice in creating custom cutscenes. Meaning that in one conversation, I might talk to an NPC who's looking away because of what I've done, while another player can expect a warmer welcome. Or maybe influencing a shop owner's mood by not wearing his gear. Subtle nuances that can provide more layers of personality in surprising ways. You could think that varied responses based on your choices are already being done, but they are all predefined animations following a script. Like the playback of a video responding to your input, which is much harder to scale. The developer of The Witcher might have the luxury to spend 8 years on their latest title and design fitting body language to every possible choice, but how many other studios do? To give an idea, Red Dead Redemption 2 took 8 years to complete as well and choice is barely a thing in that game. Imagine how much longer it would have took to even implement that in a more impactful way. And in both games, players still feel limited in their options. But how reasonable is it to keep expecting more variations in response, as long as they are created in this manner? In animation, lots of AI experiments are already being done that reduce the amount of animation the game engine needs to simulate every possible movement, while also increasing the quality, reactiveness, meaning how quickly the character responds to player input, and variety in animations. Like having lip movement adjusting to the dialogue's file language on the fly. Or in the future, when instead of playing back a different animation for each object it's interacting with, when sitting in a different chair for example, to have just one sitting animation that can adapt to every surface in real time. Both processes that are a lot less memory intensive, faster to produce and with improved results. A scalable approach that at some point could find its way in systems better at tracking and interpreting player data. Able to adjust body language of NPCs and the character you're controlling in real time. Crawling little by little towards cutscenes that differ in more than just character looks. And making the player an accomplice in creating them through their actions. It remains to be seen if that's even possible, but I suspect that there are enough developers out there who love to solve this. This video is not meant to say that all games will be better when having characters with more depth. In the movie Nightcrawler, the main character doesn't change at all, because not being in conflict with himself is actually part of the story's theme. It's about consumer demand allowing a character like Lou, a stringer who shoots violent events, to flourish the more unethical he becomes. 
to have given him a repenting arc would have missed the point and make it a lesser film. It's why I want games to be more thematic in general. A theme will not only help to produce more focused stories and gameplay, with mechanics tied to the fiction, but better characters as well. A large part of Arthur's true character in Red Dead is also because of its theme, Arthur's path of redemption about the choices between his own ideals and loyalty to the gang who raised him. But how effective is that when his arc is solely explained in the cutscenes unaffected by your open world behavior? Going forward, layers of personality will be revealed more through gameplay. So with the help of great world building, having a rich history that provokes interesting conflicts, traversal, having conversations that go beyond delivering quest information and are personal as well, quiet moments, having more variety in gameplay outside of the gameplay loop and use it to learn about other characters, including your own. And with choices that shape personality, having your behavior be more influential on how the world responds than just following a story branch. Thoughts and conversations as puzzles, allowing you to make your own conclusions, instead of selecting one from an obvious script. And eventually having games with proc gen cutscenes based on player data being tracked, generating not only appropriate dialogue, but in silence as well by letting body language speak for itself. All these elements have plenty room for improvement left to provide characters with more depth in ways that embrace the interactivity of the medium. That sounds pretty complicated. Uh, I don't know quite what to say. My next video will be about AI, as it's the most important component for having characters with more flexible depth in open worlds. In it I will explore the possibility of having NPCs without fixed patterns and behaviors to deliver a tailor-made experience that's dynamic and evolves through interaction. Meanwhile please use the comments to share how you think characters can have more depth without alienating the player. Or share examples of games that have done as well in a way that can be built upon. And if you like to see more of these videos, subscribe and click the bell to be notified when new videos are online.